Hello, and welcome to the Remind Podcast, the podcast where we get inside the real estate entrepreneur's mind. My name is Harrison Smith. I'm the Director of Growth with Matea Group at Kelly Williams Realty here in Maine and expanding throughout New England. And I'm joined today by Corey Scott. How are you, Corey? I'm doing very good. How are you? Good, good. So glad to have you here, Corey. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. So why don't you, um, for those who don't know you, why don't you tell people a little bit about who you are and what you're doing right now? Sure. So I'm uh, Corey Scott of the Corey Scott team of Annie Mac Home Mortgage in Cumberland, Maine. We are a mortgage lender doing loans in seven states currently, with Maine being our primary uh, location and primary market. I've uh, been doing loans here for 12 years or so. And before that, we we're selling real estate. I realized I liked doing loans a lot more than showing houses. So that's fair. Yeah. So <clears throat> most people we find don't actually begin their careers in real estate. They somehow end up in real estate. Uh, how about you? Where did you start off and how'd you end up in real estate? Yeah, totally. Um, I am part of that, that number. I think, uh, I graduated college 2000, uh, 2007, 2006, uh, started my job at Unum in Portland, regular 40 hour salary position, bought a condo and I should never have been approved by a condo, uh, back in the wild west of lending, got approved had a really bad experience with my uh, realtor at the time hmm. and realized like, dude, if he can do this, there's gotta be a better way to, to sell real estate. And I uh, got into the market at that point and started selling real estate part-time. I was working my full-time job. Really? So you started on the sales side? Yep. Okay. So you go from the sales side to the mortgage side, you found you like to do mortgages better. Was, yep. there, a, was there a particular piece of the mortgage business that called to you or a particular piece of the sales side that just wasn't a fit? Um, I've always liked numbers. For me, the big thing is, is numbers. Uh, it's kind of weird, but the way my brain works, I see numbers really well. Um, I hated showing houses. I, that was a huge uh, pet peeve of mine, which I know in real estate, that's 95% of your job is getting out there, checking out the houses. So for me, it's like, it just wasn't a good fit. My mentor at the time owned both the mortgage company and real estate company. So he uh, was like, why don't you just come over to the mortgage side? And I think we'll do a really good job transitioning that over. And it, it took a little bit of time, but no looking back. Gotcha. So how long are you in sales for? Um, I was doing real estate probably for three years. For a little bit, I did both the real estate sales and mortgage lending at the same time. Held both licenses doing that back when it was uh, much more open to doing that based on the way the markets worked. Um, I did both for two or three years. Sat of, when I decided to switch out of sales, my wife actually got her license to sell. And then we had a little team doing that. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you, you mentioned you love numbers. That was one of the attractions to the business. But what else drew you to mortgages and more importantly to actually building a team within that space? Totally. I mean, honestly, like the most satisfying, most satisfying part of, of selling real estate back in the day was seeing people get into their homes, right? That's mm -hmm awesome. What a feeling of accomplishment for them. It's, you know, people make that purchase once, maybe twice in their life and to be part of that's huge. So I could continue to have that satisfaction of getting into the lending side, right? Honestly, and, and still have that same goals and helping people get to the build wealth of that. And so for building the team, the big thing was I realized I could only do so much during the day. Uh, people are waiting for me to get back to them, phone calls, emails, texts, because we're getting uh, very busy based on the service we're providing. So I realized I needed to get the right people in the right spots to be able to service our clients better. And that way they weren't waiting for me to get back to them all day, which I mean, it's a very, it's a good problem to have, but I felt really bad at the time trying to do what we're doing, working all day, every day, just could not keep it up. Not having two little kids, it just didn't work. Gotcha. And and you mentioned in there a few times the word service. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, when you think of service in the mortgage space, what does service look like? <clears throat> to me, the, the biggest, biggest part of service, honestly, is, is finding out our clients' goals giving them some options to fit their, their goal, whether it's wealth building, whether it's, you know, buying a rental property, investing, whatever it is, providing that service to them to kind of give them the options to get into the real estate world. I love everything about real estate. We're investors personally, we are all in on this. And if we can share our love and our uh, thoughts on this with other people out there, that's so makes us feel so good. Yeah, that's great. So, yeah in terms of service and how you handle clients, what is the big difference between what you do and what everybody else does? Yeah, I think the big thing is like, honestly, we look at ourselves as our customers, which I know sounds super cliche and lame and crazy, right? Everyone says that, but I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, the reason I got into this is I had a really bad experience and our goal is to never give our clients that type of experience. 
So we transitioned what we did on the real estate side previously and took our whole more system and workload to work with our mortgage clients and our realtor partners and our CPA partners, et cetera, to give their clients the best experience that we can. It, it, there's a bazillion people doing loans out there. Our goal is to differentiate ourselves by giving them that top-notch service, returning phone calls, emails, it sounds simple, but no one is doing it right now because it's been so busy. So we try to staff up to make sure we weren't gonna miss any of that. Yeah, I love that. And I can speak from on the agent side, you know, we get lots of great feedback from our clients about the about the process and the service that your team delivers. Because in many cases, if they've bought before or they've spoken to somebody else before, they've seen kind of the uh, lack of uniformity in this industry with how, how service is delivered and how people are handled and how situations are dealt with. Not everybody gives that additional level like you guys do. Awesome. So glad to hear that. Thanks. So when you look at where you've come from, what you're up to, is there anything you look back on as key to your success? Is there a habit, a trait? a mindset, maybe a particular mentor uh, that's really helped you get to where you are? I think the mindset part is like always be willing to adapt. Honestly, like we're always trying to change our workflow to get it to be more efficient, better for the clients, better for the realtors. We were kind of the first ones implementing all of the online stuff back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, we try to be ahead of the game. And in Maine, it's a little bit different market here because we're slower typically in most fields to adapt based on the way that things are doing, you know, at West or down South. So we're trying to be on the forefront of that and our team anyways, to help make sure that we're giving everyone the best advice, best knowledge, best service that we can, honestly. Um, yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing. My, my mentor, like I mentioned earlier, so we had, when we got into selling real estate, they got us into mortgages as well. Like we've been looking up to him for a long time and we still communicate with him often to help us kind of, I don't know. It's good to have like a brain share out there, right? Just throw ideas, float ideas out there. Everyone has a different perspective on things. And it's really great to hear that even though I've been doing something one way for so long, someone else has a spin on it to see how we can change and adapt. That's super important to our business. Yeah, that's great. And would you say that given how much you've relied on a mentor and the people you surround yourself, is it you're actually somebody seeking to find those people, to have those conversations, to mastermind with others and, and be around those folks? Absolutely. I mean, we, we were actually in a coaching program with other top producers across the country. We've been in one for five years. That's been a big catapult for the way we run our business, honestly, as well as to kind of to uh, partner with them, have the masterminds, have the meetups, have the meetings, have the, you know, with, with COVID is a little bit more challenging, but we did a lot of virtual meetups instead just to brain share, right? Like, I don't know how, I don't know what else is out there without hearing from other people that with the way our industry works. So there's not a lot of loan officers that we meet with locally. So we try to go across the country to get a better sphere of what's out there. Gotcha. And we actually don't often hear people mention coaching and seeking coaching and seeking mentors. And you were you know, very open with the fact that you were seeking out a coach. Was there a particular thing that drew to that coach or just a general desire to learn more from others? So our coaching program, the one we're in, uh, we've been in for like five years is very specific to the mortgage industry. They work with, they also have a division for realtors as well. But uh, what drew me to that was just the way they, they emphasize the team structure. That's helped us develop the way we do things and the way we're going to continue to do things is our little, our team model is super important to the service we're providing. I remember before we got into coaching, I was trying to do, dude, I was working all the time. <laughs> like it sucked. Yeah. And I'm like, I cannot continue to do this. Like we had our first child and who's seven years old now and I was working like, six in the morning, nine at night, which I say that and I'm not joking. We're closing a bazillion deals back then before uh, the last rate dip. And I just couldn't keep it up. So I'm like, there's got to be a different way to do this. There's got to be someone out there already doing what we're trying to do. And at that point we talked to a coach and they're just like, dude, we have the method, plug up, plug our system into how, kind of how you're doing it. And then from there, the challenging part was just getting the right people. So I had a team at that time and I tried to continue to grow it, but I, I realized that a big part of what we do is getting the right personality set and the right role. And that's mm -hmm. probably been the biggest piece of coaching that we've taken away, honestly, is in regards to the profiling, getting the right fits, the right personalities, the right, uh, the right flow of people into those roles. That's been our, uh, honestly, our, our bread and butter, I think. Yeah, I love that. And actually, I was speaking about this with, with Mike as well, talking about fit. You know, he's talking about fit with partners. I mean, now you're talking about fit within the team. Mm -hmm. So w when you're sitting with somebody that's you're looking to add to your team or that's got an interest in this business, how do you filter fit? What do you look for? First thing we do before I even talk to them is to have a disc profile. 
Mm. So just because like a, it's a personality trait profile that's out there, um, we disc everyone. So when I started coaching, I actually did, I didn't, I had people on my team and then I dissed them after. And my coach is like, dude, we got to talk about this. This may not be the best fit for what, who we have doing what we're doing. Yep. So we had to change our structure a little bit, which is a very big learning and a very big, uh, different conversations that I've had previously. I always like to be like a really nice guy and give in. And I had to learn that I can't run a business by doing that all the time. That was a very important role, a very important message, I should say at that time. Um, and since then we, we lead with that. That's the first thing we do, no matter what we need to make sure they're going to fit with our, we have a really good team. I'm sure their personality style fits with the rest of it as well. We call it like vibe. It's got a vibe with us. Mm. So like, that's the most important thing after that, then we'll actually get to the face to face and meeting and going over the job description, et cetera. That's just how we do it here as we've learned so much over the years that, that we can meet someone go through all the you know, nine out of 10 steps, disc them and have them not be the right fit. So we, that's the first thing we got out of the way. Interesting. Okay. So this profile up front, and then if they, if they kind of pass what you're looking for, for that particular role, then they move on and they actually come in and meet with you. Exactly. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, any other assessments or is it really just disc you rely on? Disc is our biggest one. Okay. After that, it's, you know, we'll do a little on the job training, depending if they've been in the, in the industry or not to see how it goes. Um, and a lot of our team has been referral based. Uh, yeah. and most of our team has been past clients. They come through our process and they're yeah. like, we love the way you're doing this. And so it's worked out really well. We have people that have been through this and they know what to expect. Like that's, that's why they come in and that's how those conversations start. Wow. That's fascinating. They actually go from, from client to uh, member, just having experienced it. I think that, um, right now all but one have been through our process, which is, I don't know. I think it's a great, uh, I think it shows a lot about the way we run our team that they go through it and they would actually want to come work and give that same, the keyword service we talk about to our clients out there. They understand it. They get it. Yeah. Interesting. So kind of the million dollar question, all this is why not just be a high volume loan officer with a couple of assistants? Why go down the path of actually building out and scaling a team? Um, because I think honestly, like if we can give back to everyone and like, and, and continue to grow and share our model, there's, there is a lot of not great and or dedicated loan officers out there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like to give all, a lot of us a bad name for just, I don't know, for whatever reasons, right. We want to continue to share how things should be done and what they should expect. That's honestly what it is. We could sit back and do a couple loans a month and be very happy, but we want to continue to help people grow like us doing this also we're employing we're employing people right that's a big part of it we're giving them jobs there and our our team is rock stars and they are um, a huge they're all of our success the people we have on our team so if we can continue to grow and get the right people in we can help more people and it's just giving back yeah i love that when we meet with potential agents or staff members you know we don't talk about jobs and career paths, we talk about opportunity and opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, because really that's what we're trying to create. You know, to your point, it, this is not just a come in and go through the motions and go home. Like this is a, it's a way we do things. It's a vibe. I love that word. Yep. And ultimately we're trying to create something bigger for everybody that wants to be a part of, to be a part of. And if not, not the right fit. Right. And that's exactly the conversation have at that point. They come in, they, you guys have run a very similar operation that we do. It's the right people in there, right? You just gotta have the right fit and, uh, it's a, it's a quick exit. If not, I feel like, mm -hmm. because at that point it's, like I said, it's an easy conversation to have, this isn't a right fit. And at that point they kind of know and expect that as well. Right. Right. Yeah. It's the slow to hire, fast to fire mentality where, you know, you Love want it. to put them through the paces, make sure that they're a great fit. And if they're not, you got to pull the ripcord quickly because that bad fit, you know, can really mess up the entire culture, the entire vibe of the group. And we've, mm -hmm. we've all been down that road, building a team and adding mm -hmm. the wrong person. And it is a really painful process when that happens. And it's really painful to unwind it too. Especially in our business, right? Like real estate mm -hmm. and mortgage is very similar. We, we are very review driven, right? Like with yep. the way the reviews are out there, that's like our digital currency, I feel like now. And totally. that's one bad review, which I know it sucks to say that, but like people are gonna look at that. You can have a million positives. They're gonna find the one negative review <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. where they're gonna target on, which is, it's terrible to say, but that's just what, that's what I would do looking at furniture or something, right? I'm gonna go and I'm gonna, like, what did someone not like about this? And yep. that's what's out there. You're going to be very cautious of that.
very particular. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love the, I love you calling reviews digital currency because in the world we're in now, that that is that's uh that's where everybody starts. You know, they they Google yeah. loan officer or real estate agent or you know whatever business you're in, and if you're not in that pile with positive reviews, uh, they're going to keep scrolling, and you've lost yeah. the opportunity before they even talk to you. Don't blame them, right? Why would you right. want to waste time with someone you know that already has uh, has had sub awesome experiences? Like that sucks. So what it's a huge process to go through a huge huge purchase. You got to make sure you're trusting that with the right people and the right team. Yes, because as somebody like yourself who went through and had a bad experience, you know what that's like, and and you didn't enjoy it, so you certainly don't want to you know perpetuate that with somebody else. Exactly. Too, I'm great. too cautious of that. Like we got to make sure we're giving everyone the best possible experience they can get. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So what would you say are the most important lessons you've learned along the way, both for yourself personally, um, and then also on the team building front? So I'd say personally, um, I, I think this relates to both, honestly, is, is delegating. That was part of what held me back for so many years. And I was like, dude, I can do all this. I can handle everything, return all the phone calls, all the texts, all the emails, no problem. And then I realized people don't want to wait. I'm missing things. I'm dropping the ball. When we had that mindset, curve back, I don't know, seven, eight years ago when we flipped that switch on that, it changed everything. And I was like, I can start to trust people with our loans and our process once you get the right, like I said, it goes back to the right people, right? We have a dream team, I feel like. Our team is amazing. So I trust them with our clients. Otherwise, before it was just me kind of making sure everyone thing was moving and that was never going to sustain. So personally, and also in the business world, my team building, like that's been a huge uh, learning for us is to be able to trust and we'll get things off my plate. Otherwise we can't keep growing if I'm trying to do it all myself. Never gonna work. Yeah, and that's great. We see that a lot in the real estate space in, in all facets of it where you've got a lot of people that are really great solo performers, you know, the, the typical solopreneur. And then they go down the path of, of adding leverage or building a team and it doesn't work. And a lot of times it's not because they had the wrong people or the wrong systems or the wrong process. It's because they weren't able to embrace the team um, and use the team as it was designed to be used. Yeah. I, I see it all the time. We have people that are coaching that have, we try to build these teams out and then they have three or four people that are loan partners or loan assistants, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. And they don't delegate work off, even though that's what their role is. And they're like, why are we not getting anywhere? It's like, well, you got to pass off the work to make sure that that, that client's getting service correctly. So you can continue to help other clients. That's what they're there for. Uh, it, it blows my mind. People don't utilize that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it is definitely, uh, it's potentially one of those fatal flaws in this space where people, you know, they, they get in, they build, they grow, and then, you know, they, it stalls because it yeah. just, they're unable to reach that next level of being able to let go. Absolutely. It's, uh, that's the hard, that's the hardest thing. Trusting other people with your, it meets your income, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's, that's our, that's how we live. That's our paychecks. Trusting them with that. That's a huge takes a lot to get over that but once you like all comes back to the people i'll say that one million times today but you have to have the right people and the right roles to make that fit and have that trust out there yeah so you've mentioned balance you know with with children and also delegation now a few times yeah any tricks to how you've been able to make that work <laughs> i i would say i'm not the one to answer that uh <laughs> with, with the best answer it's it's a challenge mm -hmm. um it's a, it's a compromise, right? So, I mean, a lot of times uh, our work takes us nights and weekends because of the nature of the beast. Our clients are out of work. They're looking at houses, they need whatever. Um, I think having a partner that understands that too is super important. And uh, other than that, <laughs> it's hard. It, I am not the not the right one to answer that with the best, most succinct answer. <laughs> no, and that's great because you probably shouldn't be. That's the problem. When you Generally, that hard driving uh, entrepreneur is not the one that is good at that. It's usually somebody that's poking them and prodding them or, and reminding them to do that. So let me ask the question a different way. How yep. do you know when you've gotten out of alignment and you've gone too far? Um, uh, partner, team. My team does a good job holding me accountable to that too. Oh, good. They say, get you know, get out of the loans, give us, a, you know, they, they're aware when I'm, and when I'm in the weeds too much, we call it when I'm at my desk in the weeds in the loans, which I shouldn't be doing. My job really at this point is helping realtors grow, helping, um, helping Mike, our awesome business development guy kind of get, get things rolling with that too. There's a, 
uh, I shouldn't be in my actual loan. So they, when they see me doing that, they're like, dude, step back. It's under control. Like it's good to get that reassurance every now and then when I, when I start to get too involved again. Yeah. Well, that's good. And you've got a team that's not afraid to remind you when you've gotten out of your lane and, and they push you back in it. That's, that's, you know, that's the dream. I, we, I told you with dream team and they're better <laughs> at all this than I am, honestly. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, they are they're awesome very fortunate very lucky to have who we have working for us no that's great and that's that is one of the toughest transitions we see and, and many of us have lived through is going from being in the weeds and doing it all to allowing others to get in and do it all and then being okay with that yeah uh, so that's that's a challenge it's hard i learned a long time ago that people i always thought they wanted to talk to me i mm -hmm. learned they just wanted an answer they wanted the right answer and not to wait so yep. that's always kind of gone that whole avenue. Like I can give you the answer, but it may take five hours to get back to some meetings or whatever. Whereas we staffed up. So that way they get an immediate answer. And it's the right answer still, but it may not be me delivering that message. So that's, that's been the one challenge of this to make sure people know that the info they're getting, if it, even though it's not for me, still very accurate and correct. Uh, I'd rather make sure they get the timely answer though, versus waiting for me to get out of whatever I'm doing and call back. Yeah, I absolutely love that you just said that because we hear that all the time. You know, nobody does it like me and they want me and, and they want to talk to me. They want me to give them the answer. And really, the client just wants the right answer quickly. They want a good experience. They want to move forward. And yes, you're, maybe your name on the team or your name on the building or it may be your business, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, the world revolves around you. In many cases, the client wants to work with who they who they fit best with, who's going to be able to give them the answers and do it quickly. I, exactly. We correlated to like the, like a doctor nurse model Yep. where like the doctor is probably not calling you back with news all the time. It's going to be the nurse or someone else working in the office. And I'm not saying I'm the doctor obviously, but it's like, <laughs> they don't care who's calling back, right? They want to get, they want the info. They want to correct. They want it timely. That's just the, uh, the way we've kind of adapted everything. Yeah. That model's existed in other industries forever. And yet somehow in some of these real estate industries, we don't see, uh, we don't see that model, you know, stick. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, do you know why? Why is that? No, I, I wish I did know why. I, I think that's, I think that's the funny part is we consistently talk about, you know, that doctor nurse model is a great one where it's the doctor is doing uh, the high level important stuff. And then he's got a staff around him that handles all the other stuff really well, much better than the doctor does. And that's, you know, by design, it allows the doctor to focus on what they should be focusing on and lets everybody else do what they're really good at. Everybody gets a better experience because of it. But somehow in the real estate space, we have, we watch people struggle constantly with being able to let go and let somebody else make that phone call or answer that question, respond to that email, or even in some cases processed alone, like, like in your world. Right. Totally. It's crazy. It is crazy. It really is. So what is, um, what's the one piece of advice you wish you had gotten when you got started? Um, don't try to do everything yourself. Like, I, I think I got that advice and I was like, no way, like I can do this, like we'll grow this way. And I wish I had, I wish I had implemented it back then versus waiting four or five years to really kind of adapt that and mm -hmm. bring that as part of our workflow. Once it happened, everything just clicked and we're like, all right, this is how it should be. Not me trying to do everything all day, every day. I can only have so much time today. Never going to work that way. So that, that's the one thing I, uh, the one piece of advice I wish I had take, or taken or listened to years ago. That makes sense. So the, the Corey Scott teams, you guys are in Maine, but you're not only in Maine. Am I correct? Correct. We are lending right now, I think in seven states and working on getting um, the rest of our licenses. We can lend in 49 states now. So wow. it's just a matter of getting our licenses approved there. So um, we're doing Maine, New Hampshire, Mass, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Florida. Florida has been a big one recently with, mm -hmm. with COVID and the market down here or down there, I should say. Um, and we're working on adding the other states. We're getting Texas. We can, the cool thing with our companies, we can kind of go anywhere. Someone wants, has a buyer that, and they're the best part of it is they're going to have our same team running those loans, no matter where they're buying. So they're going to work with our same loan partners or assistants, whether they're buying in Florida or Maine. So we have a lot of clients that come back to us. They, they want that experience, even though they're buying in a different state. That's a huge part of our business. Yeah, that consistency is amazing. A client can get the same experience no matter where they're buying and selling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's awesome. All right, Corey. So if somebody wants to know more about your team or your personal journey uh, sure. or wants to talk mortgages, 
what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, I'd say the best way, honestly, is um, email. I'm on email more than I should be on, <laughs> we talked about, mm-hmm. but uh, Corey, C O R E Y, at uh, any A N N I E dash Mac, M A C dot com. Or they can call or text at 207 400 7750. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's been it's been so great to have you. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thanks, Harrison. I really appreciate the time. This is an honor to uh, come on after your yeah. You had some great guests. I've listened to the shows. I'm very Good. excited to be on here with you. Oh, I appreciate that. So we'll have to have you come back here in the in the near future. Update us on what you're up to. We'd love to talk more about the investing side of it too. I'd like to have some folks come back and talk. Uh, certainly the investment side, because all of us should be getting into real estate as investors, um, and then hear more about what you've got going on. So we'll have to set that up. Sounds great, man. Really appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much, Corey. Yeah, thanks. See ya. All right.